Why Bludgeon instead? Because Bludgeon wasn't Mastered Sparrow. That's the, the plain and simple answer. Fiendfire was a rare card we had mastery of. Bludgeon was a rare card we didn't. That's why I picked Bludgeon. That's the self-imposed challenge. But I'm rapidly losing patience here. Hmm. Renlo, thanks for five months of support. I suppose playing while hungry is a really bad idea. I am so very hungry. Tank 7 here, because we have the healing to get it back. Nineteen. Can't do nineteen. Inflame is a very good floor one card. Dark Embrace, not so much much as I love Dark Embrace, you really need some early attack scaling stuff if you want your run to go very well. Ooh, I just realized we can't kill that. Should have looked at the draw pile. Definitely should have looked at the draw pile. It was correct to bash the front one rather than striking them each. Worked out, though. If we can get this health back easily enough. Double in flame. I mean, we don't have mastery of it. What if it was our first two cards? Seems like a strong start to a run, doesn't it? Me heavy blade. Not from the scrap ooze, of course. Oh, well, actually, you know, this does seem pretty strong. Fight won't last long enough for the regen potion to be any good. I think we only get about 9 health out of this. Strike's about to absolutely slap. Defend Bash? Or Inflame Defense Strike? Should be 4 strikes to kill. By bash, we bring it to 26, and these do 13. Yeah, two strikes would kill perfectly here. So let's just block. Got him. No potion, good. Twin strike. I mean, when you have this much strength, any card that hits multiple times is top tier. Pummel at Sword Boomerang might be better, but Twin Strike is perfectly fine here. Ooh, we draw all damage next turn. This slime is absolutely hecked. Perfect draw order for this fight. Look at that. Her blam gets split. Early strike dummy would really uh, send this off the rails. There's a sword boomerang, but there's also anger. Zero cost. Add a copy of this card to your discard pile. Burning pact ain't too bad either. Anger with this much strength is a really powerful card. Self-duplicating free card. Just add card draw and you have a sort of make your own sword boomerang. Anger is the secret strength scaling attack when you're energy limited. It sure is. So I'd say probably Anger here over Boomerang, but you could easily take Boomerang with this much strength. Our first couple upgrades are going to be on the Inflames. Let's take Anger. This is the fight for the regen potion. This fight will definitely go the full turn count required. 
Double in flame turn one is pretty ideal here. Can't get much better than that. I don't... Uh, we'd have to draw Anger, Twin Strike, Strike Strike to kill one next turn, though. That's gonna hurt. Actually, three strikes and Anger is 44 damage. We can kill you. Nice. Save 10. And then you're dead, too. The power of five strength. It's beautiful. We take ten more, though. Unless I'm willing to energy potion to save ten. I don't think that I am. I think this energy potion reasonably saves 18 in Gremlin Knob and 20 in Lagavulin. Get a Tungsten Rod. When we would lose health, lose less. Flex for more strength. Pommel Strike is just damage and card draw. Pommel Strike and Anger go really well together. Let's take a Pommel Strike. One of the last achievements is Killing Transient. I think Watcher is probably the best uh, transient killer, Ailey's. Try to build a, a rush down infinite. You don't even need to go infinite, actually, to kill Transient with Watcher. You just need a couple of, you know, Ragnarok plus Divinity plus Vulnerable can do it. Silent with Catalyst can also work very well. But it's, I think, more difficult to build a Catalyst Silent deck than it is to build a, a Watcher deck that can kill Transient. To kill Transient, you'll probably want to play on either Ascension 1, actually maybe even Ascension 0, just for the easiest enemies possible, or Ascension 17, because in Ascension 17 you get one more turn against the Transient, although the rest of the game will be substantially harder. The Transient fight lasting longer does give you a better chance to kill it. But then 18, 19, and 20 only add difficulty that you don't need. So, depending on how you rate yourself as a player, if you can handle Ascension 17, I'm, I might recommend trying that. Uh, otherwise, drop it down. Play easier. It'll be easier to build a, a deck that can kill Transient if the rest of the game is easier, right? What a good start to this run. Let's upgrade these in flames. Do the Ascension effects stack? Yes, so an Ascension 20 run has all 20 of these penalties applied. It's pretty brutal. Twister1M says, any tips for the nine plasma in one turn achievement? Meteor Strike is the main way to do it. Meteor Strike is definitely the main way to do it. With either Sneko-Eye or Hologram or Rebound. Don't discount a Duplication Potion or Liquid Memories as well as a way to get more plasma evoked. It's possible to channel nine plasma using one of the other... cards that generate plasma, either fusion or chaos, but you need essentially an infinite combo to be able to do this. Pretty nasty set of gremlins, but with our high offense, high octane deck, we got it here. We can do inflame. Kill you. Kill you. And then we only take four here. Hello, Markatox to Master Card. Mastery is a self-imposed challenge that we're tasking ourselves with this year. To Master a Card, we have to beat the game on Ascension 20 against the Hearts with two or more instances of that card in our deck. Easier said than done. Hey, look at that. We healed from that fight. And a second Twin Strike. It's just good enough. I'm really hoping we find a Strike Dummy now. If we find Strike Dummy, this deck will absolutely, positively slap. <laughs> I am a god of Spire, and no one can stop me. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. How does he do it? <clears throat> How does he do it? <laughs> Please, for the love of goodness, somebody clip that and submit it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exclamation point clips. Thank you, Faley. Me too. Clip it. Clip it. So all of our strike cards now deal three additional damage. Very notably, Twin Strike deals three more damage per hit. But also Pommel Strike does three more damage, and the Strikes do three more damage. Essentially, almost every card in the deck does three more damage. Pretty ridiculous. Pretty tempting to open Bash Twin Strike here. We could wait for the Inflames, though. That might be smarter. I'll wait for the Inflames. If we can actually do Anger first, then Inflame, Inflame. There we go. And then we want to go Twin Strike first, then Pommel Strike shuffles the draw pile, drawing potentially the Twin Strike again. 28 damage Twin Strike, by the way. And we do indeed draw, draw Twin Strike again. Eat that, Legavulin. Close to a KO. Weak Pot only saves five here, but we're a pretty good chance to find a new potion. A new. Yeah, a new potion? Hmm. Letter opener. If we play three skills in one turn, that would require literally all three defends. Maybe we'll find a rage or a disarm. Immolate's cute, but disarm going into Hexaghost is excellent. Sap two strength off the enemy. Nice little combo with Tungsten Rod, too. Unfortunately, skills don't say strike. Bummer about that. We'll definitely fight another elite here. Man, I can't believe Strike Dummy showed up right after I asked for it. More Twin Strikes. There's the Rage. Genuinely, that Rage is really good. I'll probably buy that. There's also Dolly's Mirror here, which could allow us to duplicate any card in the deck. Although, we don't actually have any good dupe targets. Even Bash has already been mastered. Bye, Magic Fish. Thanks for six months of support. Still thinking about that one hit point silent win yesterday. Wasn't that fun? That was fun. I don't need to buy another Twin Strike. Not for money. Rage card remove looks good, though. Honestly, I still would remove a Strike, I think. Actually, no. We can remove Defend. Yeah, heck it. Remove a Defend. Add a Rage. Can't afford to dupe the Rage after buying it. Although, that'd be... a half-decent idea. Does Spire still get updates? No, just XW. Spire is finished development-wise. There are still new mods being created for the game. But, uh, no, nothing from the devs. Not taking that uppercut. Although it wasn't bad. Are you playing attack? Get block. If you say so. Yeah, I better play this. Blocks for three and does five damage. That's not a good use of the potion. Get him, Twin Strike. You got this. Fourteen damage twice. Perfect, but a very good fight overall. Omomori will block curses. Havoc, Body Slam, Infernal Blade. None of these are particularly good. Did we do ladder challenges last year? We did one at the very end of the year after our 400 heart kills. We did not win that ladder challenge. Hmm. 
money. Beneath Oressa. Yeah, I've uh, I've played a little bit of Beneath Oressa deck back. I think it's still in early access. Kind of a, a really interesting take. Beneath Oressa has you playing cards for combat like Slay the Spire, but it's, it's matched to 3D combat animations. So, like, your character does a cool kick at the enemy when you play a card. It looks pretty sweet. Mechanically seems to borrow very heavily from Spire. Um, for the better in some cases, for the worse in others. Haven't streamed any of it, though. Oof. Wait a minute. Rage, defend, defend. Yeah. Easy. Any Mao Kenshi tomorrow? No, we finished the campaign of Mao Kenshi, Mark Makar. We are finished with that game. Next up is Elderond. We'll be playing more of that tomorrow. Ooh, Shockwave. Three weak and three vulnerable to all enemies. Or Heavy Blade. Or Heavy Blade. But do we need Heavy Blade with these Twin Strikes? Not really. Strike Wave. It's a pretty good upgrade going into Hexaghost. We might also want to consider upgrading Disarm. Or Rage. But I think I would upgrade the Shockwave. A bit behind on upgrades now, but the stack is really coming together, and it looks like it's going to shred Act 2 quite effectively. Thirty-six damage twin strikes. Sure, you can do two damage to me. I don't even care. Beep. You can live for now. Buttery smooth. Took a little bit of damage, but nothing major there. Speed? Or Reaper with this much strength? Reaper's automatically really worth considering. Speed could scale max health, but it's a little difficult to stall for. Or Fiend Fire hits based on the number of cards in hand. Also good with this much strength. Although we don't have a lot of ability to get cards in hand in the first place. Feels to me like a very good Reaper, especially with the uh, Shockwave and Rage. Yeah. And our boss relics. Oh, we. Oh, Pyramid and Sneko and Runic Cube. What fun choices. Oh, the Runic Cube Tungsten Rod's not that good. Yeah, these are these are fun choices for boss relic. Popkey says, how does this kill Heart? We're going to have the ability to survive the initial assault of Heart um, with a couple creative things we're going to be able to do later on. And then we're going to hit the Heart very hard with our attacks. Yeah, violently. Big aggro, lots of damage output. Circle, triangle, or square? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Choose your favorite shape. I like triangles, personally. What I really like about Runic Pyramid is that it enables us to wait for the end to feed. It enables Rage to be maximally impactive. It's quite good.
should be relatively good at the elite fights. We've got lots of front load in this deck. We're not really scared of Book of Stabbing with Disarm and Shockwave and Tungsten Rod. I think we can handle elites quite easily, actually. So we should maybe fight a lot of them. The only upgrade that really matters at the moment is Rage. A card we'd really... <clears throat> A card we'd really like to see is Bloodletting. Is not only do we take reduced damage from it, but we can keep it in our hand until it's maximally impactive with the Pyramid, and then do a lot of stuff. What does the Rod do? Anytime we lose HP for any reason, it gets reduced by one, which is quite nice. Very nice. This is an interesting formation. Again, with Reaper, I'm not particularly afraid of something like this. Normally, you'd potentially run out of hit points if you did this, but Reaper says it don't matter none. With six points of strength, that Reaper is going to be healed for 10 or maybe with vulnerable 15 hit points per enemy. That's pretty good. I think going to an early shop is a good idea. You know, this could be a run that gets Brimstone and is really happy about it. This deck would love a Brimstone. Just do the damage. Surely we can deal 21 next turn. Maybe even we can reap. 13 plus 8 equals 21. The power. Um, I believe we get the same health. You know, we get one more if we strike and then reaper. Look at full health. Easy. Shrug plus is 11 block and one draw. Very, very nice here. Or armaments can upgrade other cards. Do relics cost the same every time? Relics have a base price in the shop that is determined by their rarity. Commons are the cheapest. Uncommon and shop relics are the same price as commons. Uncommons are much more expensive at 250 base. In fact, you can even see the, the breakdown here for relics. Uh, and then rares are over 300 gold. There's a random variance, plus or minus 5% imposed on relics. So for example, here at Ascension 20, including the plus 10% cost modifier of Ascension 16, you have a base price of 165 which gets modified by plus or minus 5% to create the range 157 to 173. And likewise with the others. Free Relic? Free Relic. Take a free Oddly Smooth Stone. There are rare potions? There are. There are. This is not a very good Rage turn. Let's just go Defend, Disarm, Twin Strike. Although Rage would do the area damage. Disarm you. I've taken to killing the back mugger instead of the front looter. They do identical actions on turn one and turn two, but on turn three, the mugger has much higher values for their damage. Thirteen plus seven. It's nine. We go rage, bash, pummel strike, anger. You are attacking me this turn. How dare you? All right. So next turn we play inflame reaper with vulnerable. Get back some of our health. Turn after that we kill. We twin strike. Twin strike. Just like that, we're out of the hell out of this fight with full HP. No potions used. Perfected strike. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be eight. So it does six plus sixteen plus three. Nine plus sixteen, twenty-five damage. Twenty-six with strength. Eh. Twin strike seems better. Ooh, 
Rip seems really good. Zero cost Voln. About Feel No Pain. Yes, Feel No Pain is excellent here as well. We have Disarm, we have Shockwave, we have Reaper, and more. Could take Orange Pellets. If we play a Power Attack and Skill in the same turn, remove all of our debuffs. That's pretty good too. Although not necessarily good here. It'll be good later on. Such as versus the heart, where it can remove vulnerable. That could be a big part of survivability for that fight. Oh. Which would make the flex more worth considering. Flex is also a letter opener card and an unmastered card. Both good reasons to consider it. It would also be nice to remove another card. So if I didn't buy the pellets, I would do what? Feel no pain, trip, card remove? Oh, I like that a lot. Guess trip isn't that big a deal with Shockwave Plus, huh? Can I do pellets, feel no pain, flex? I think so. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. We have lots of powers for the pellets, too, which is nice. Seems good. Bruh. Flex plus. Pretty cool. There's the mastery, too. We need a run with two flexes. Let's flex. Amazing card with Pyramid. And here's the Book of Stabbing, but we've got Disarm, turn one, easy peasy. Skill, power, attack. Means we get to keep that two strength from flex for the whole rest of the fight, like basically a zero cost in flame. Pretty sweet. The rage yet. Actually, probably want to keep anger for after vulnerables in play or for the turn that I rage. There's no benefit to playing it now. This looks like a good turn. Flame, Flex, Shockwave, Anger. Next turn, we Reaper to get our health back. Twelve Strength. Twin Strike does 30 damage twice. Good lord. Bottled Tornado! Bottle of Feel No Pain sounds pretty good. Impervious seems pretty good. Whirlwind's also half decent. Maybe that Impervious. Let's go Flex Pot over Speed Pot. Yeah, we can just take so much damage and still end at full health in a lot of situations. It's that easy. This fight's all about debuffs. No problem for us. We'll show them. 
The tungsten rod even makes this sort of face tanking build a, a lot more effective because we can reduce damage as we take it. Reaper, kill you, actually. Yeah, that's the right way. That's the right way. There we go. Duplication potions, pretty hype. What about an Entrench Plus? I like that with Pyramid. I like that with Barricade. I like it. Double your block for one energy. This is one of the rare situations where, even without Calipers or... Barricade, I think the Entrench is quite good. Because of the free upgrade and because of the Pyramid. Combust's also actually half decent because it doesn't cause any damage to us. Just five damage per turn to all enemies, but is five damage per turn enough? No, no it's not. Dupe Pot. So many good dupes here. Well, it's not as good as a Flex Pot if I use it on Flex. These potions aren't as good, are, are better than Dupot, actually, I think. Alright, we can finally upgrade Rage. Let's do that. Two more elites this act. And a whetstone, upgrading two attacks at random. Twin Strike would be good, Pommel Strike would be good. Regular Strike is not that good. This is an okay blue key, but I'll take the whetstone. I'll do it. I'll do it. Hmm. Just twin strike. I could actually bash Grim Leader, or we can play Feel No Pain, take one. Play the Feel No Pain here. Keep the Shrug. I could have also played Shrug, but I'd much rather have that in case we get attacked here. Which we don't. It's not yet, we don't. Don't actually have any area damage in this deck, which could make, other than Reaper, mind you, could make life a little difficult for us. This would be a pretty good energy potion turn, perhaps. Although, hold on. Lex. Rage. Hmm. It has to be Energy Potion in Flame Shrug Reaper, doesn't it? Actually, just using the Reaper for the AoE here. Not really caring about the heal. And we actually need to play the other in flame or this gremlin won't die. Easy. Now get hex. Red Skull, if we're below half, we have half health, we have an even more strength. We're offered a second copy of Entrench, which is really interesting here, but what about Drop Kick or Pummel Strike Plus? I think I want Pummel Strike Plus. Draw two. We're just one bloodletting away from greatness here. Yeah, where's Gurya at? Use you. Thank you. 
Dark Embrace, or Havoc. A bit expensive, that Dark Embrace. Definitely a card I like. Definitely a card I like. Yeah, I'll take it. Make us a little bit slow sometimes, but that's the price of progress. This is definitely not the turn one we were looking for. Do five to all, but I, I need to keep it. Pretty good use case for the block pot, although we can always reaper our health back. I don't think I'll use it yet. Hmm. Being vulnerable is okay. We can fix that. Although, if I can kill with a flex potion this turn, I really ought to. Go, go, Gadget Red Skull. Let's see. Incoming damage would be what? Uh, 21, 30, so 27. Yes, we go below half. Spooky. So just play Bash Strike this turn? Don't overthink it? Spooky, though. It's drawn in flame. Let's see if we can. Perfect. So we go flex. In flame. Can I do anger reaper? Yes. 20 plus a lot. If I Reaper first, we're going to lose the strength. Also, if I Anger first, we'll lose the Weaken. So we should go back to full health here. Or at least very close to it. So thanks to Orange Pellets, we're not vulnerable. And they're very dead. Fight. Boomerang with a plus. Definitely not bad. Arguably pretty dang good. Sure. With a plus on it. Now we don't need a heavy blade. Or anything like that. Rage to get rid of Rail? I don't think so. Do not think so. No, thank you. We don't need those stinky cards. 
really good fight for Impervious here. We can kill the Sphere next turn, maybe. It's shocking how well we do on three energy. Shocking, I tell you. There it is, Bloodletting, the card we've been looking for. And we can upgrade it. Now the deck will truly be powerful. Way better than a Shrug Plus here. Bloodletting is going to trade two of our health for three energy. And that is going to let so many beautiful things happen. Imagine what I could do with four energy. How about six? How about six? Any boomers? That will just kill one of you nerds. Take zero here. Excuse you. I did not say you were allowed to do that. It's one of these runs, that's right. And don't you forget it. Perfect block again. Oh no, not the debuffs. Whatever will I do about the debuffs? Anything but those, Collector. GG. Very, very strong deck of cards now. Demon form. Another way to gain immense strength or offering. Another way to gain immense energy and potentially card draw. Pretty hard to turn down offering here. We also take one less damage from offering. And with Reaper, we can get the health back. And we don't really even need a demon form. Yeah, I'll take offering. Hell yeah, I'll take offering. My only source of four energy is Busted Crown. This is actually a situation where Busted Crown ain't so bad. We have all the core pieces that we need to win. Could also take Pandora's Box, transform our remaining strikes and defends, or Tiny House for a bunch of, as they say, stuff. I'm pretty happy with Busted Crown. We have mastered all three of these. There'd be a red outline if, if any of the boss relics had not been mastered yet. Almost every relic has been crossed off the list. We'll take it. Less card rewards from future combats, but more energy. And that's good. Really good. Probably upgrade the other Flex next. We have one Omomori charge. Oh, that's a shop too. Okay, let's go not here then. Here. Not there, there.
I'm glad that the culture of Birdman has not been lost. What a fine tale. Birdman. Good for getting back bloodletting, mostly. Nah. Oh! We have one Omomori charge. Means it's only one normality for 999 gold. We can get rid of the curse here. I don't have any way to discard normality once it is in my hand, though, so it is a bit of a problem. But surely only a bit. Can it really be this easy? It sure can. Can it really be this easy? Ow. But my face, though. Wave loose. No. Do we have to master circlet? We do not. No, master circlet is fortunately not on the list. We have to master writhe though. Today. Not today. Still having a little bit of a weird time with some of these turns. Draw. Uh, let's use this to remove the flex. Bloodletting, shockwave, draw cards. Two. Ten block turn one will help a bit. True grit. Yeah. Needs an upgrade, but is actually quite helpful here. With both uh, Dark Embrace and the other stuff. Do we make this the Double Entrench run? I actually think we should. I think we can do great things with Double Entrench. Waffle for more max health, definitely valuable. Don't think Ceramic Fish is likely to be much good. What about Dark Embrace, number two? Dark Embrace number two is okay. Already got rid of the normality. Let's lose a strike. Yes to Entrench. 
Turnip seems unnecessary. Yes to second Dark Embrace? Yes to second Dark Embrace. Not to Havoc, though. I don't trust that Havoc. So that's all there was of, of value to spend money on in that shop. Reptomancer. Definitely gives us a tough time. I see. Use the flex potion here. Well, hold on. We can do double. Double letter opener is enough, right? This does nine. We'll do another five. No, that won't be enough. Okay, good time for flex potion then. Review of the footage. This might have been okay. Whatever. Shuriken. If we play three attacks in one turn, we'll get even more strength. And I think Flame Barrier is a pretty decent block card, too, so welcome. Buy a potion now. It's your lucky day, lady. I'm loaded. I'll take three. Even more strength with a cultist potion. Sure. That's one strength per turn. Here's a situation that could end up cursing us. <laughs> For that reason, we'll not want to play attacks unless this enemy is doing an attack intent that we can't handle. Like this one. Good. And I could even purge that next turn. And I can purge that next turn as well. Power? Attack? Of course, we seem to be looping here. Why don't you change that? That's more like it. That... That I can deal with. Have some flame barrier. Easy. Dropkick. Kind of fits into the deck, but without the shockwave, could be dead card. I don't think there's any need for it. No need. No need. Is Parasite going to be one of the toughest ones to master? I think so. Although at least we can deliberately farm Parasites off Writhing Mass to get the mastery. Uh, I think Injury and... Shame could be a bit tougher.
deck's getting a little thick. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Use the two cost in trench. I'm okay with that. Here we go. Ten nib for even more damage. Could be used on Reaper, and I don't know, do we want a second copy of Bloodletting Plus? I'm gonna go with yes. We would love that. So that's even more energy generated from cards. Combined with Double Dark Embrace, we're gonna start to really, really go off the rails. Blood for the Blood God. AKA me. Jawworms for the Jawworm God. This is the most possible damage dealt by an encounter on turn one. Triple 17s from the Jawworms for a total of 51 incoming damage. And I don't even care. Blocking the path thanks to the Prime Sub. Welcome to the Kuzik Sub Club. Waiting for Reaper now. There you are. No. Penultimate upgrade. Getting the Dark Embraces upgrade matters a lot. I think we most want to upgrade this True Grit, though, so we can exhaust a card of our choosing rather than a random one. It's pretty unplayable as it is. Run seems crazy. Yeah, it's, it's pretty absurd. More than absurd. It's, it's ridiculous. You too. Yay, strength. Pass this turn. Excellent turn to double flex. Keep all of the strength, thanks to orange pellets. Skip the Dark Embrace for the moment. Difficult not to play one of them, though. Sure. Pen nib. Good work.
the damage. Next boss. Hey there, Slap Chop. Thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome. The Goosey Sub Club. Feel the pain, Dark Embrace. Just take some damage. Keep this impervious. Time Eater limits the number of cards we can play. Every time we play 12 cards, our turn gets ended. That means we just have to be a little bit choosy about what we play on what turns. No biggie. Power to use a flex, though. Skill. Power. It's unlikely we can kill Time Eater in four cards here. So I'm just gonna set myself up here with all these powers. Got him. No prob. Maybe could have set a pen nib there, but quite frankly, I don't think it's gonna matter much. We have tons of money as we go into Act 4. Dakvac says, do most bosses have a set series of attacks or is it RNG? Actually, depends on the boss a little bit. Uh, so, quick summary here. Guaranteed pattern of attacks from all of the Act 1 bosses. Hexaghost, Slime Boss, and Guardian are all completely fixed. In Act 2, Bronze Automaton is completely fixed. Collector is somewhat fixed and somewhat random, and Champ is almost completely random. So there's a mixture in Act 2. Then in Act 3, Donu and Dekka are completely fixed in pattern. Awakened One is mostly fixed with a slight randomness, and Time Eater is mostly random, which makes, again, uh, it's a little tricky. So I, I guess I'd say more than half of bosses have fixed patterns, but there are a good number of them, particularly in the late game, with either semi-randomness or full randomness in their attack patterns. Generally speaking, when a fight has randomness involved, I need to upgrade these. When a fight has randomness involved, there's some measure of control you can impose over it or, or prediction that you can employ. For example, Time Eater can't use any move other than their multi-attack twice in a row. So if they're using their debuff, you know it's followed by a multi-attack or single attack. And if they're using the single attack, you know it's followed by either a debuff or the multi-hit. Wait, what? That's a weird response to Flex, Bailerbot. Why would you say that? No.
lose another strike. Sure. Spatula evolved. Thanks for five months. Spoon's kind of interesting here. Chance to not exhaust cards that would normally be exhausted. Problem with Strange Spoon is that then we don't draw off Dark Embrace or get block off of Feel No Pain. But I'll take Lantern, Thread Needle, sure. Spot Weakness with Pyramid's pretty good too. Sure is. We want Trip? Not really. Berserk is basically free energy with the pellets, kind of. But it does cost us card draw. But I think with Double Dark Embrace, it'll be worth it. We spent most of the money. Good job. Is a Blood Potion better than a Block Potion? Block Potion blocks 12. Blood Potion, 20% of this is 14. Yes. Blood Potion is better than a Block Potion by a slight amount. Esteten, welcome to the list of channel cuties. All hail, that's a new cutie. Holy heck. Cutie alert. Awesome. Get you added right away. You keep watching, I'll keep streaming. Let's go. Cactu ERs, thanks for the nine months waffle. And Steve Care, thanks for 25. Uh, Steve Care 25, excuse me, thanks for the prime sub. Heck yeah. Hmm. This is not the turn one we're looking for. I think we just keep this flex and the Reaper. This is not the fight for the Cultist Potion, is it? Surely it's the heart fight we use that in. Ouch. Hmm. This fight can go pretty badly pretty quickly. Um, they're going to have Balak next turn. We could actually end up dead. I think I'll keep the Twin Strike then. Yes, the Red Skull. The power. Fortunately, Shockwave doesn't do much of anything. Tell me we're alive at least. I think so. Yeah, I think so. With his hand. Three attacks. Okay. a very bad draw. Jeez. All the good stuff on the bottom. You gotta be kidding me. That's fine. Oh, I actually had pinned it. I could have killed the shield there. This is still fine.
Having so little health going into heart, though, seems like it could be really challenging to win. Almost impossible, one might say. Almost. should have kept the anger to use orange pellets. Good. Could even remove rail before playing in previous. Flex, Rage. We might even want to skip Flex. No, we need the Strength. This is a question of how much I need three health this turn. We need that extra hit point. Or that extra draw, excuse me. Oh, great time to draw void, thank you. Flame barrier entrench flame barrier entrench keeps us alive. That should be enough for the moment. close here. Thankfully, the Tungsten Rod reduces some of this damage, but we lose our plated armor. Okay, Shockwave this turn is very important. Just need to draw Reaper soon. I'm getting disarmed, kind of sucked. Take two plus one plus one. Go to two. That would let me not play the other bloodletting. That's not possible then. Okay, just end turn. Good. Okay. All is well. That's all we needed. In theory, it is. What's the play here? Uh, weakness and flame and flame offering? Put a one? Put entrench first. Probably should. Yeah, we should. Okay. I won't be able to pin nib if I hmm. so just in flame spot weakness offering. One HP. Formal strike. Reaper. 
No prob. Never had an issue in my life. Let's keep going. Bringing you below 400 health actually seems really important. So we can kill in two turns before we get attacked again. Um, do I want to use the other stuff now? No. This is enough raw health to just survive this, thanks to the weakened from Shockwave. Although that requires us to damage cap and survive this turn, which looks really hard. Actually, no, with Tungsten Rod, we're not we're not as close to dead as I thought. Okay, so let's just go to town. So normally we'd be barely surviving, but again, Tungsten Rod makes this less. We brought Heart below 200, so we can kill on this turn. And now Red Skull is active. The power. That's all she wrote, Twitch chat. GG. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.